Well, good morning, everyone, I, and afternoon to those of us joining us uh, from Dublin. I am super excited to kick off this morning's panel. Um, on the call today, I'll walk you through who we have, four very talented executives from different industries. I'm Anna Johnson. I think I know most everybody now. Um, and then also on the call um, from Dublin today, I have Irina, who's our uh, People Programs Lead. So this event today is being recorded. We are gonna ask you throughout the call to jump in, give us your feedback. Don't be shy, ask us questions. Today's event is in support of our ongoing DEI pillars. I know we see these all the time, but I wanna drive us right back to them. So first thing you'll see on the left in our pillars is education and awareness. Within Quantcast, one of our biggest focuses is helping to provide training, events, and activities that reinforce the values and the benefits of diversity, equity, and inclusion across the organization. We also are focused on development and growing and retaining people. And we know when we do cool things and bring in cool people, um, it's gonna make better experiences for everyone at Quantcast. Talent representation is consciously third. When we start with focusing internally on how we're doing as a company, growing our people, doing the right things at the core, we know that that will attract really great people to work here. And the final piece here is the community work that we do and giving back externally to the communities where we operate. So these are the DEI pillars. Today's event is a little bit of pillar one and two, right? Focused on creating awareness, but also focused on development. This is a, this is a result of the work that our Quantcast Women's Network has done. It is also in celebration of Women's History Month. I know last month we did a number of events to celebrate Black History Month. Um, and all of this is wrapped around in how do we create a ongoing, more inclusive, equitable, and diverse environment at Quantcast. Um, I do want to mention, here's my sales pitch to everyone joining in, is we have an open house. If you think or feel maybe inspired after this call that you'd like to get involved more, we have an open house on March 25th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, where you can come, hear about, learn about Ingrid Burton, who is the executive sponsor for Queen, has agreed to do a presentation. If you saw her on Monday, she is phenomenal. Um, really encourage all of you to join us at the open house and learn how you can get involved in our activities. So you can also connect with Queen or QWN. Um, depending on where you are. I think the name varies virtually, uh, but you've got the two hashtags on Slack here. Please go ahead, um, join those if you want to hear about what's coming up. And for some reason, my slide just shuffled, but that's okay. Um, on the panel today, we've got Dipti Borger, who is the co-founder and chief product officer at Ahana. Um, we've also got Dana Estes, who's a vice president of sales strategy at Smart Care. Smart Care was a spinoff of Ecolabs. It was a 200, Fortune 200 company that went uh, pre-IPO. Jackie Ford or Jacqueline is the founder and CEO of Art Class Inc. And then finally, we've also got Jerry Foley, who is an executive coach. She owns her own business. Um, but before this, she used to head and was an executive doing executive coaching at Walmart and Safeway and another number of other large Fortune 500 organizations. I am so excited about this panel. Um, that said, I am gonna stop sharing my screen and dig into um, a little bit about how the format is gonna work. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna ask some questions. If you have questions on the phone, please don't hesitate to dive in, ask away. Um, not by calling in, but chatting in. And then Irina is going to interrupt us and make sure that all of your questions for these amazing, incredible, extraordinary women are asked. So that said, um, first question I'm going to ask of our four leaders, and, and I'm going to start with Dana and go from there, because Dana, I think I already know your answer. Um, where would someone find you on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m.? Uh. That's a great question. Anna knows exactly where I'd be in the middle of an arena teaching horseback riding lessons to people of all levels. 
including the person hosting this call. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jerry, how about you for uh, Saturday at 10 a.m.? Uh, I would probably be, um, I'm living in North Carolina right now in the mountains, and I would probably be um, on a walk um, with some friends or by myself out along the um, Swannanoa River. Um, just enjoying, you know, the mountain air and, and the fresh air. Um, I would either be doing that or I'd be going looking for, um, in my spare time, I love to do uh, interior design. So I'd be going, you know, to some store that I've never been to, to look at their designs and get ideas. Hey, I hope my background passes your approval. Um, Dipti, how about you? Yeah, um, two answers, depends on the week, right? Um, uh, first answer, if it's, uh, uh, if, it, uh, if, if I'm in uh, good shape, I'm in out, out with the kids in a park, uh, I have a four and six, uh, and so I'll be, uh, you know, walking uh, by a local, uh, you know, regional county park. Uh, second answer, uh, sleeping in with my husband doing the same. <laughs> After after a seventy five hour week uh, at a, at my startup, so dual answers. <laughs> awesome. I wonder what it's like to sleep till ten a.m. <laughs> How about you on Saturday at ten a.m. Jackie, I think you're on mute. I didn't know who you was. Oh, you mean me? Okay. Um, <laughs> what would I be doing? You know, I'm still trying to wake up at ten a.m. and. Um, uh, probably uh, corralling only the one daughter I have, but I'm a single mom. So, you know, it's kind of like two in a weird way. Um, yeah, we're going to try to get outside, try to get outside and make her tired as early as possible in the day. I mean, it's kind of what I'm dominated with right now. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the first question um, we labeled or, or talked about doing this as a strong female leader panel. Um, and I reached out to each of you and said, hey, join us. We're doing this great thing. Um, and I'm going to start with Jerry. Jerry, what was your reaction when I called and was like, hey, we want to hear from you as a leader. Um, what were kind of your thoughts there? You're muted. <laughs> I was delighted uh, and, and very honored. Just, you know, really thrilled to be able to share my experience and, you know, my strengths and, and you know, um, anything that I can do to give back is, is always an honor um, and a great privilege for me. So thank you very much for setting this up. Thanks for joining us, Dana. Excited, nervous. <laughs> Then a little bit more nervous than what did I sign on for and then excitement again. <laughs> it's always exciting to be able to discuss my path um, through my career. It's been an exciting one and, uh, and, and a storied one as well. So I'm um, excited to share my experiences and kind of how, how I got to where I am today and what I overcame to get into this position today and managed to get invited to this panel. So thank you. Yeah. And, you know, as you're describing this, I, I can't help but see the uh, picture behind you of your horse. Um, that is Dana. I think she's jumping something that's like five feet tall and five feet wide in that picture. She was long listed for the Olympics. So while she's also an executive, she's one heck of a rider. A um, little bit. <laughs> um, Dipsy, how about you? Yeah, uh, honored to be here with uh, such a spectacular uh, group of women. Um, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, I think as I've grown through, uh, through my career, I've always wanted to listen to different perspectives. You know, everyone is coming from different paths. Everyone has their own unique journey. And what I've learned is it's important for different perspectives to be shared. Right, because someone may identify with Jerry, someone may identify with Dana, uh, someone may identify with me, right? And unless we share different perspectives, uh, it we won't have more uh, strength as a whole, right? So yeah. very excited to be here to share uh, 
each of our journeys and to listen and learn from each other because that's the other aspect where we're constantly we you know it is hard um uh, it is good to acknowledge that you know all of our journeys are hard and that it together by talking about it we get strength in and motivation to go even further beyond right and so that's why this is really really important uh, for me to start doing um uh, especially after i found my company it's like we need more we need more more women we were just talking about this earlier about where in or each of us are in some ways you know in a male dominated <laughs> industry uh, and 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 just listening to each other uh even in these 15 minutes i feel more motivated to go and do something big <laughs> so i hope <laughs> others too <laughs> awesome good jackie well um you know i was shocked <laughs> kind of like a <laughs> an injection. Oh, we just got an injection. Yay. And I was, "Well, I'm a leader." Oh, thank you, Anna. <laughs> so it kind of uh made me put my big girl pants back on um out of, you know, the mom at at home time we've been having. And you know, I just read that 4 plus million women left the workforce. Mm. Okay, during this pandemic year, mm -hmm. last year that we've just had and um so things are super different and our priorities have shifted immensely um so i'm very focused and concerned and invested in the growth that we can figure out how to do both per personally and professionally because doing those things together is outrageously hard and has we've had a magnifying glass on it now recently and so and i'm not a woman in tech i have worked in plenty of tech environments but i'm not battling it out directly with men too much um except for the other ones doing what i'm doing anyway thank you <laughs> <laughs> you know um i and, and by the way don't forget uh, irina do we have anybody in the chat yet asking questions i want to make sure we're pinging that but we can share a, a reminder a reminder yes please make sure if you have questions for any of them that you are writing them into the chat um you know the first question i really want to dive deep on with each of you is around as you progress in your career how did you know i mean each of you really took a very different path how did you find that path and i'm going to start with dipti and then i'll just kind of go to dana and jerry and jackie Um so Dipti, you know, how did you know you wanted to be the founder of a company? Yeah, a uh, hardest question for me and I got to go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um I think that um you know the the truth is it's not like everybody I don't know. I felt like it's not like I woke up one day and said I want to be the founder of a company, right? It's it takes it it takes you uh time to realize your strengths. it takes you time to get confident in them um and uh, it also takes uh, opportunity and luck uh, and the right uh, and the right uh, backing from the right people um i um when i i've, I've always been ambitious um uh, right after school um i came uh, um i i got my uh, masters in databases uh uc san diego um i have a, a an mba from berkeley haas and i always knew that i wanted to be someone big right uh, straight out of school is i want to be the ceo right but that's just an aspirational thing right nobody tells you oh here if you do th this is the checklist of 15 things you'll get there that's not it that's not it and so you have to work your way through things um find the right opportunities grab your chair when there isn't one uh sit at the table when you don't have a spot um all of those things matters and and many times early on in my career i didn't do that later on in my career i started to realize that well if i need to help myself because uh, yes there are champions and yes there are people who will push you through but a lot of it is uh is grit and hard work and being in the right place at the right time and speaking out loud um and and getting backing from the right people i have an amazing uh co-founder and uh, uh my ceo who is Uh, we've known each other for 12 years uh, and if it hadn't been for him and the right market and the right backgrounds i wouldn't have been here right so i think it's it's a journey uh, it it's a constant reflection into uh, what your strengths are where do you want to go um 
slight realization of a you know a one year path a three year path just a, a high level idea of what you want to do right and talking to the right people and uh, eventually getting there um and uh, luck is an important factor <laughs> don't depend on it but it matters yeah sure that's great gary how about you Jerry, you're muted. I'm sorry, I keep, <laughs> I keep clicking the wrong one. Um, and believe me, I've been on Zoom a lot, so it's not unfamiliar to me. Um, well, when I got my uh, bachelor's degree, I, I was, uh, as I shared with the, the women um, earlier before we came on, I, I, I'm a, first generation American. I was born and raised actually in Dublin where you have an office. Um, grew, I was actually born not far from where your office is, uh, but I uh, came to the United States as a teenager, went to college, got my bachelor's degree in science or, or uh, in psychology and thought I wanted to go into special ed. I started te teaching special ed and realized that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I was kind of at a loss, got married um, young um, and then um, unfortunately got divorced. And it was at that point that trauma, if you will, was what catapulted me into, um, you know, trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to do when I grew up, which, you know, I'm about 34, 35 at that point. So um, I, I was fortunate enough to um, go and seek some expertise. And it was um, at the University of San Diego. Um, I went to their career counseling center and um, I sat um, across from this woman who was a career counselor and she was, you know, we went through my values, we went through my um, personality type, we went through my interests, we went through all of those assessments. Um, and, um, you know, I finally sat there and looked at her and I said, I want to do what you're doing. I want your job. <laughs> And she laughed. She goes, okay, this is great. Let me tell you what you got to do. And, you know, gave me, you know, you got to go back and get your master's degree. You probably might need a PhD. You know, here's how, you know, here's, you know, and at that point I was a single mom. Um, so I went back, got my master's degree in counseling, special emphasis in career development. And that's where it took off. Um, and I've worked in, so it was quite deliberate from that point. I, I mean, I kind of floundered from the time I was, you know, graduated from college to when I went for my master's. And um, it, it was as often is the case, you know, for a lot of us, it's a trauma that catapults us into, you know, doing something different. Um, and um, I've never really looked back from that point. I've worked for nonprofits. I've worked for, you know, uh, the largest retailer in the whole wide world as an executive coach and head of their um, learning and development department. Um, and I've had, you know, great champions. Um, one in particular was a male champion um, and, um, you know, um, he was he was the one who kind of launched my career once I got out. But I, I think one of the things that that has always um, stayed with me and driven me is my um, willingness to learn, my willingness to go back to school. Um, and, and that's kind of been a pattern throughout my career. Um, you know, whenever there's been, and I've been laid off three times, you know, so I know what that feels like. Um, each time I've gone back to school and that has, you know, stood me in good stead. That has catapulted me to the next level. Um, you know, that has given me the edge, if you will, um, on my competition. Um, so um, my path to get where I am now was, you know, started in my early 30s um, and was quite, quite deliberate.
Awesome. How about Jackie? Hello. Um, so I'll, I'll give a quick rundown. Um, I did Jackie, all the- can you hear me? Stuff. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Can hear you. Um, so, but Anna's gone now. Anyway, um, I kind of did all the right stuff. I got really good at what I wanted to have skills in, which was being a fine artist. And um, in your youth, you just like, whoa, I love this. I'm really good at this. And you do this. And my, I come from a family of, of artists and professional artists. My grandpa was president of a private art college here in Oakland, CCAC. I grew up in that world. And I thought, okay, I'll be an art professor. This is the thing I do. So I did uh, teach throughout the museums and the um, um, community centers quite a bit um, leading up to a master's. And then I taught uh, at CSU EB for 10 years. And I was laid off three times in 10 years <laughs> due to budget cuts. So that now I'm doing this thing I love. I'm masterful at it. I really get a lot from, from um, being an educator, which is like almost an angel job. You know, you're giving and giving. It's kind of like the equivalent of mama. You know, it's like the big mama. You're always, you know, sort of giving and giving and giving. But when you get laid off over and over and then there's no jobs at all in my field, all, everything was cut. This was when Schwarzenegger was governor. And um, I found myself selling medical devices in an OR. I was lucky to have a job. I was gonna waitress. I was 40, you know? to pay my rent. And they socked me in. They thought I was responsible and smart enough to learn, <laughs> learn it on the job, which I was. But what happened was it was a stress level I had never experienced before. Outrageous. I'm in an OR. Somebody's open. Their body is open. I have to tell the surgeon what to use. I barely know what I brought. I barely know the names. I'm like, you know, and I go home with hives. I break out in hives at 5 p.m. for a month doing this job. So the stress level was nothing I, I'd ever experienced and I needed to keep this job. And so I turned to what I knew, which was, I just doodled. I just doodled for hours and it helped calm me down. So as I stayed in this job, my peers were also suffering from stress, you know, uh, uh, health care workers. I mean, this was not during the pandemic and there was a lot of stress. And uh, so my OR pals, I said, come on over, let's have an art party. And I started, doing experiments on them. They didn't know it, but I'd say, come on, let's do this. And I'd have them doing some of these nice art projects for people without any skills. Just let's just do this. And they had amazing results. They just were so relieved. They were like finding stuff they couldn't find in their house. They were like just jumping up and down joyful for weeks and weeks afterwards. And I thought, oh my God, I think I'm, I, think I did something here weird. So Back in 2012, I started developing this into a business. And only when I stepped out of that whole world in 2014, four months pregnant, did I start to build a website and slowly pull it together. So it's been a long time. And um, I couldn't work for anybody because this didn't exist at the time. So it's a, it's a bit like coaching. It's art therapy without being therapy but it has everything to do with wellness in the workplace. Kudos to you, Jacqueline. Kudos. It was a, a, a very, very uh, strong story. And like I said, we learn from each other and get motivated by each other and uh, well done. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, I'm not sure if we lost Anna. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm she's trying gone. to see. Yeah. So, <laughs> think, uh, yeah. but you can go, go ahead, ahead and ask, answer that same question. So, you know, I think um, I I don't think anyone necessarily knows coming out of high school or college or whatever. Like, this is the career path I want to take. This is what I'm going to do. And when I'm 30 and 40 and 50, I've got it all planned out. We might think we do. We're going to be the CEO, right, 50? But it's. Um, we all come out of high school saying we're going to be the CEO, especially nowadays. So I think what's really important for people to understand is you own your own career path. You own your career path and you've got to take, take control of your career path and decide what you're going to do, how you're going to get there. Ask the questions you need to ask to get you there. You need to be vulnerable. You need to accept feedback. 
you need to listen to feedback even when it's tough and don't want to hear it and you cry yourself at sleep at night or whatever you have to do when you're getting that feedback that you don't want but you have to take control no one's gonna well sometimes you get lucky like Dipti said sometimes you get lucky and get the tap on the shoulder more often than not you don't and so it's on you in this somewhat male especially when it's a male dominated world it is for you to be your own advocate your own voice don't wait for someone to say hey i know you should do this for your future you take charge of your future and that's what i had to do i knew from a very young age i wanted to be a leader i wanted to be a leader and i wasn't i was not getting lucky <laughs> i was not getting the chance to be a leader and I had a, um, a female career coach who helped me, how she helped me get this job when I had zero management and leadership experience in the workforce. I had it in my horse business that I owned, but I didn't have it in the actual, I didn't have it where I could put it on a resume. And she helped me get into a leadership role that springboarded my entire career to where I am today. And I look back and I still don't know how I did it. But all I can say is I took a lot of hard feedback. I took a lot of notes. I paid attention. I was my own advocate, my own voice. I decided what I was going to do. And I didn't let anything stand in my way to get me there. So like Jerry was saying, every time she got laid off, she went back to school. Um, I did the same thing. I, did, I didn't get laid off, but I did the same thing where I was working full time, running my business and went to school and, you know, and got my bachelor degree i got my master's oh what the heck let's get a second master's right i just kept just whatever i needed to do to take the obstacles out of my own path own my future and get there so i would say that was i don't know if that was exactly answering your question anna but <laughs> yes that was awesome um and, you know to to tail on that we do have a question that came in on the chat which is around who were your role models? And I know, I'm assuming for all four of you, you didn't really have female role models to look up to in the organization and go, I'm following them. And I do wanna do my little Quantcast sales pitch because today over half of our executive team is female. Um, whereas comparatively awesome. other organizations in tech, I think the statistics are about eight or 9%. So you know, as you're going through and you're trying to look, and, and this is coming from the Q&A too, how did you find a mentor or a role model or someone to look up to, to help guide you? Um, and I'm going to turn to Jerry first. Um, you mentioned you had a man who was your champion. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You are still muted. <laughs> I'm smart, really. I'm smart. <laughs> you are. Uh, but can't click right, but I'm smart. Um, well, I, you know, you're right, Anna. I, I, you know, as as you were posing that question, I, you know, you know, I drew a blank, and then I thought of, you know, the woman that I I described who was the career counselor at the University of San Diego. I mean, she was definitely a role model um, for me. Um, and, you know, those years that I was in graduate school, um, you know, she really, um, she really um, supported me all, all the way. Um, but then um, when I actually got out into working in the corporate world, which I, I launched my career from there, um, I met, um, he was the senior executive vice president of human resources. Um, and um, his career was in a little bit of jeopardy because at that time there was massive layoffs going on. This was San Diego, massive layoffs going on in the defense industry. And that's what we were in. Um, and so I shared with him you know, some of my learning from school as, you know, as far as, um, 
you know, what do you want to be kind of thing when you grow up? What, what do you want to do? And, and helped him to kind of figure out where he wanted to head. I didn't, it wasn't a formal thing. It was just, you know, a fun kind of thing between, you know, um, he was my boss. He had hired me and, um, you know, um, that set the tone then for our relationship. So it was a, a, you know, a mutual sort of learning from each other. He knew that I had certain expertise that he didn't have. He had certain expertise that I didn't have. And his knowledge of the organization was critical for me. Um, I didn't have knowledge of quote unquote, the politics. And by politics, I mean the relationships that exist in the organization. When you're new and, uh, you know, especially a woman, when you're coming in, you know, you don't know that. And, you know, everybody is great, you know, um, seemingly, but there's a lot that goes on that, that you don't know. And I was able to rely on him for that information. And it wasn't gossip. It wasn't anything like that. It was understanding, you know, what the, what's the strategy of the CEO? Where are we going? Where are we headed? What do we need to do for our people to help them get there? Um, you know, and how can we add value? How can we add, um, you know, here's the strategy and how can we add um, monetarily to that? You know, do we need to retool, retrain our people, which is actually what we did. Um, so it was a very um, mutual, um, mutually beneficial relationship. And um, I worked with him at that particular organization for five years, and then he moved on um, and, and became an even more senior um, executive um, HR person uh, at another large corporation in San Diego. And after he was there um, for about a year, and he had told me this before he left, he said, as soon as I get settled, you're coming over. And, and so he brought me over after a year, like tripled my salary. Um, and, you know, it, it sounds a little, you know, I, I know that was very fortunate and I was literally blessed. But, you know, and it, it sounds a little funky, maybe a little hokey, but it was very platonic, uh, just a mutual relationship of, of helping each other. And we had each other's back. You know, nobody said anything about him that I didn't, you know, understand or defend. Nobody said anything about me that he didn't understand or defend, right? Um, so, um, and, you know, when I moved on, I did have, um, there were some women at Walmart who, um, you know, I um, was sponsored by it as well. Um, it wasn't as close as a relationship as I had um, with that, that particular gentleman, um, but, um, you know, it was still, uh, uh, they were still good relationships. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, that's what presented my, itself to me and, and that's what I, that's the opportunity that I took. Awesome. Um, we do have another question. Irina, do you want to read from the chat the next question? Yes. Uh, the next one is, how do you define success? And I think it's a really interesting one <laughs> to see from all of your perspectives what success means for you and what you look out for to know that you're on the, on the right path to what you desire to achieve. Dipti, do you want to jump in on this one? Sure. Sure. Yeah, it's a great question, right? It's, you know, the way I think about it, you define your own success. Each of us defines what success means to each of us, and it's going to be very, very different. Um, and I would say that with success, you might want to add what happiness means to you <laughs> because they kind of go hand in hand, right? Um, 
at the end of the day, success needs to mean that you're happy, you feel that you've accomplished something, uh, you feel that you have created impact, it's satisfying, right? Because everything we do, you know, we want to make progress, we want to create impact, uh, but there's a fundamental, you know, deep down, you want to be happy, right? So, so that is the, I would say that's the way I would frame it, right? Success is what you define it. Now, personally for me, I think that I have uh, changed what success means to me over the years, and that's okay too. The definition and your own definition of success will change. You know, I joke like when I came out of school, I wanted, you know, I wanted to be the CEO and everybody wants to be that, right? But guess what? After the first, uh, after I had my first child, I said, uh, um, you know, yeah, it's it's still okay. You know, it's it's going to be. I can still get there. And uh, I, I I had a uh, I had an incredible champion who, uh, you know, I say they're you know sometimes these champions they're blind. They don't see you as a man or a woman. They are you know a color or whatever. They they're blind, and you they're the best kind, right? Because they will give you the same opportunity. They will give the same opportunity to everyone if there's potential. And so he threw me in the deep end of the pool. I, I had a three month old, and um, and it's like, can you go run the worldwide uh, uh, global uh, technical sales team? And, and I was like, did you notice I just had a baby, right? It did, I mean, he's like, well, I know you, you're capable, uh, figure it out, right? And of course there was support, you know, behind that. I said, okay, I'm, maybe I shouldn't give up on my initial dream of becoming CEO, maybe, it, maybe I can do it, let's try. So I started to try it and I did well and then and then we decided that, you know, we wanted company for the first kid. And we, you know, after the second child, it was like, wow, I don't know if it's going to be possible. So I put my ambitions on break. I said, I don't know if that CEO thing is going to happen. Uh, it's probably not. Uh, and, I, and I gave up on it for a while. And I said, let me, let me just, you know, reset my path, my goals, what, what I define as success. Um, and, and I was happy. Right, so that's what success meant to me for that period of time, and I was still a you know executive member, and and I was good, you know. And then another opportunity came along to do something in incredible, and and found a company, and it's like, wait, maybe maybe after all, you know, it's there is you know I, this is possible. So I think you can define it. You need to define your own what 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 success means to you. Um, be happy with it. Be satisfied with it. And it might change and that's okay. You keep working on it one day at a time and you work towards your definition of success. So that's, that's my, my take on it. <laughs> awesome. Irina, you wanna jump in with the next question and maybe we'll throw it to Dana. Yes. Uh, so we have a question from Megan and she's asking, raising a family as a full-time working woman, what advice do <laughs> you have? I'm gonna pause and say, we might not throw that one to Dana because she doesn't have kids, but our other panelists all do. So okay. I'll go back up, back up mute now and let someone else who actually can answer this question, answer it. <laughs> and I actually skipped the question. Uh, so we'll, we'll go back to the other one, but uh, the first one will be yeah, as a full-time working woman, what advice do you have for current mothers or mothers to be? Then we'll come back with a question for Dana. You know, I'm I'm gonna turn it to Jerry. And the reason is Jerry has grown kids now. Um, and so Jerry, you know, you were climbing the corporate ladder for years. Your kids have survived and thrived. Um, what advice looking back would be, you know, your perspective on what would you say to moms like myself? with you know, an 11 month old and a five year old, what, where should my focus, how do I balance that out? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> my kids survived, but did I? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I think, you know, um, I, you know, to sort of piggyback on what Dipti said, um, you know, you have to balance, um, I had to balance what was in front of me, you know, at the time, you know, when, when I went back for my graduate uh, degree, um, or one of my graduate degrees, uh, when I was first divorced, um, I was single mom. And um, 
I, um, my girls were uh, nine and eight at the time. And so what I did was I, I, um, I went to school during the day. I, I took um, a break from, from working, went to school during the day and worked part-time at the university during the day. So when they were in school from nine to three, I was in school and I planned it that way. I was in school and working part-time at, at the university. Um, so um, for those two, three years till we sort of got back on our feet, um, I, was, I was able um, to do that. And um, I also moved, um, I was living in Orange County, California and moved down to San Diego, actually to Coronado where I had a sister and um, my sister was helpful with the girls if I ever needed, you know, um, uh, if I couldn't get there, you know, to the school to pick them up or that kind of thing. Um, and um, so, you know, it, it's, it's putting the pieces sort of all together. And yeah, it, it was stressful. It was, it was very stressful. Um, I, you know, but I was loving, um, I was loving school. I was loving the work. So it, it wasn't as, um, uh, you know, I, and I knew I had a, I had a vision of where I was headed. Um, and, and I also, I also wanted to be a role model for my girls. I wanted them to see that I could do it you know, that, that they had a mom who could still be a mom and, um, you know, could be there for them. Um, was it maybe ideal in the way that I was brought up? No, I mean, you know, I was brought up in a nuclear family, but, um, you know, um, that's the way it turned out. Um, yeah. So, you know, rely on um, whoever you can trust you know, with your kids. Um, I, you know, when the kids were little and I went back to work um, after um, I had them, I was working full-time while my husband was in dental school and um, working at a job I hated, but I was the only income. But I found this woman who would take care of the kids and she was basically a grandma to them. And I kept in touch with her till she died. Um, so there are people who can help you, you know, um, and, and as long as you can find someone like that and trust that person or those people, um, to do it, everything, you know, um, I, you know, I won't say it's easy. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Um, but, um, some of the women that I, I used to ask this question of the women at, at Walmart, you know, who were senior executives. And I'd say, how did you, how do you do this? And every single one would tell me I have a spouse or a partner or parents or aunts and uncles who assist, you know, and, and they've, they, they, they embraced that and allowed that, you know, and so that's how I did it. Yeah, you know, and I think the other part of this question, I'm going to turn this one to Dipti because she's living it now, is, you know, a year ago, I remember, and maybe maybe some of you remember, there was this video of this dad on a video call, and his kids, like, come into the room, and then, like, the wife or the someone is dragging the kids out, and he's, like, trying to look serious, and a year ago, a little over a year ago, that was hilarious on the internet, and that was shocking to us that a dad had that going on in the background. And then we look at the world today and I don't know about your world, but that's my world every day. It's like, let me put the hand on the kid's face and keep him out of the video while I'm trying to do whatever, right? These are our lives now. And with shelter in place, I don't have the luxury of grandparents or aunts or uncles to come in because, and we thought it was three weeks right? We thought this was three weeks. We're sheltering in place. We're going back to the office. It's going to be great, right? Dipti, you're with me on this. And all of a sudden, like now we're in this world where 
COVID is a year. A year ago, Governor Newsom said, we're gonna shut down for three weeks. And leaving the politics aside, being a parent is hard. Being a female executive and having two very young kids is crazy hard. Dipti, how are you navigating this? How are you surviving? Um, I, you know, I actually think of people, women who have it harder than I do, right? And I, I and I actually think of that a lot, right? Today, Jack, uh, Jack, you know, Jacqueline, you're my inspiration, right? I will think of you the next week and say, if Jacqueline can do it, then I got to stop complaining. Seriously, right? So I do think that support system, what, what do, you know, Jerry talked about support systems. Support systems are incredibly important, right? And whether you have kids, whether you don't have kids, whether, you know, whatever it is, you need to have your own support system to get you through hard times. And, and this last year, uh, I just blogged about it uh, on Monday, which was an International Women's Day. And, and I, I, you know, I said, I'm so grateful and I'm so lucky to have the support system that I do. Uh, uh, you know, my, my husband, it's, uh, he's a senior partner at a large consulting company. So it's not like, you know, we're both crazy, right? And, and so it's like, how, how, do you, how do you deal with it? So we take turns, um, it's equal, equal in the house. Um, and if I have meetings in the night, he puts the kids to bed. Uh, there's, if he has meetings in the night, I put the kids to bed. We have help, we have childcare, which is a blessing. Um, I don't have my, we don't have our parents here. Uh, you know, I grew up in, in Mumbai. My parents are back there. They, they haven't been able to visit even. So we could have asked for help, but you know, with, with everything going on, it was too risky for them. Um, and so I think number one, build a support system uh, may not be for childcare, but to talk about it, to cry about it, to vent about it, right? And, and, and that's important and you get through to the next day, right? The second thing I would say is that think about the, you know, the, the, there's find other people, women, friends in, in the similar situation. And it helps a lot uh, just talking about it because, um, you know, sometimes like this, right? We talk about it. Um, we feel stronger, we get, you know, we, we move on, right? Uh, it, it, it is hard, uh, we were doing remote uh, schooling for one kid, uh, the pre preschool was closed for nine months. So, you know, we had um, uh, our four-year-old uh, at home. Um, the go positive thing about it is it's actually become okay for, you know, children to be around in, in Zoom meetings. Uh, and um, and it's, that's the positive that's come out of this, that it's okay. That's life. You can't you can't separate these things to you know to a degree where it's it's like it's like it's not happening, right? It is integrated. There is no there is no separation anymore. Work and life are just integrated into one, and it's for each other, each of us to figure out what that balance is, um, what makes sense for you, and how far you know you can go with it. So there's no right answer. There's uh, there's no uh, magic formula. Uh, um, you know, those are some, some thoughts that come to mind. Yeah. That's great. You know, <laughs> the, the other question that comes in is around authentic self and bringing the true you to work. Who are you at work? You know, how does that carry over? So I'm going to, Dana, this one, you, you don't have kids, but I hope you can answer this one instead. Um, I'm going to, you know, what are the things you do to bring your authentic self, the real Dana to work? And how do you show up in that way at work? I have fur babies, Anna. I have lots of dogs, horses. They, they take my time and energy. I, and... I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's, um, it's understanding yourself and getting in touch with yourself and knowing who you are and who you are when you're on and who you are when you're not necessarily in front of a Zoom camera presenting to 70 people. So it's, um, and you have to be really authentic with yourself and know who you are and then who you wanna be, right? So you have um, who you are today or who you portray today 
is not necessarily the five or 10 year from now who you want to be or who you portray. So I think always having what your ultimate self goals are in mind and what you need to do to achieve those self goals and, and get to that place in your life, whatever that looks like, uh, is really, really important. And then set that path in motion, find the people who can help you get there, get the input and the feedback from those people that are going to help you get there and, and portray yourself in that light. Awesome. You know, um, there's a tactical question and, and it comes in from Alicia and it's around salary. Um, how do you know that you're being paid the right amount for the work you're doing? Um, and, and Dana, can, can you jump in on that one? Um, how do you know if you're being paid right? <laughs> and I can really <laughs> ask you, and then I'm also going to ask Jackie, because both of you, Dana, I know you own a horseback riding business as well. And Jackie, you own an art business. How do you price yourself in the market? How do you ask for money from clients? So Dana, do you want to kick us off and then I'll switch it over to Jackie? Do you want me answering that from the horse business or from the business from my Either business or. world? Uh, I think in the business world, it can be really hard, right? So you have to do some research. You have to Google search. You can get on LinkedIn and get ideas of what, um, what a position that is either you hold or you're looking into um, and get kind of comp range salaries uh, information from that. Um, if you're a publicly held company, you might be able to get a little bit more information. Uh, and then you have to understand your real value, right? What value do you put on yourself and understand if, it, if you feel it's fair or not? It's, that's a tough one, it's <laughs> tactical and tough. What do, you, what do you do? I mean, I'm gonna drill in, sorry. What do you do if you're not paid enough? If you look at it and you're like, wow, I feel like you know, I am underpaid or undervalued or not in the right role. And you know, Dipti, feel free or Jerry jump in here as well. But what would you do, Dana, if you were like, gosh, I'm, you know, I'm not in the role I deserve to be. What would you say to somebody who said that? Again, it's your self-advocate, right? People are not going to be like, oh, Dana, did you know you're underpaid and you're not in the right role? Let me fix that for you. That is not going to happen, right? You've got to find your mentors. You've got to find the people who maybe understand things better than you do. Um, you've got to get the feedback. You've got to set yourself up for success. You've got to take control of where you want to go and find your path to get there and do what you need to do. And I want to clarify here, what you're saying is more around like advocate for your career or are you saying walk into your boss and ask for more money? Both. Well, you, might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you better set yourself up right and then walk in and ask for more money. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. so. well, I've not been a corporate person. Um, I really thought about this question um, when I got it from Anna. And I thought, you know, I'm having a hard enough time just in the, in the entrepreneurial market charging for what I know I need to, to charge uh, without having, uh, you know, price cutters bo bothering me all the time. So what do you do in that environment with all of these people competing for what you know you deserve as well? And I really kind of broke it down to, you know, you have your own superpowers. You do. And if you don't know what they are yet, you have to figure out what they are. And if you need to discuss what they are with somebody who, who you can trust at work or at home professionally, you got to discuss it and figure out what your superpowers are, what you really bring to the table, and then what the existing problems are in your field and your particular unique solutions to them. And if you can bring those two together and then practice at the very best way to communicate them, okay practice communicating them then you can walk in and say so these are my superpowers this is who i am and here's my solutions and you do need to give me that position to do that at this rate of pay so that's what i would do i love that um, good answer for my um uh, you know, in a, in the corporate uh, space where uh, there's there's a role and there's a band, right? Every 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 every, every title, every role has a band, and uh, uh, and there's Glassdoor is a is a great one in uh, for tech where you know you you put in a you put in a title like administrator, uh, system administrator, right? Or a QA engineer. You'll get a you'll get what that you know you'll get a range. You'll you'll see what uh, that score is. Now. 
um, along with that, there is a, you know, like Dana was saying, you have to assess yourself, right? Um, be fair and be, um, be honest about comparison. Uh, try to be not biased uh, as well, right? Uh, be frank about it uh, and look at it objectively. Uh, there's three people. This is what I'm doing. This is what I see the other two doing. Um, uh, am I going to get a raise this year? If yes, how much, right? Um, I learned early on in my career that you have to ask. Nobody is going to just come in and say, "Oh, you, you know, yes, there are." It happens, right? It's you know, you you. It, it, there are env environments where it's merit based, and you just get what you deserve, right? Uh, and that's why I said, like, it, uh, you know, in at certain startups, I've been lucky that that was the case, and I just got you know what I deserved, right? But even then, you got to ask because men do. Men ask. Men ask for promotions, <laughs> men ask for raises, women don't ask as much. In fact, I coach young women who, to, they're afraid to ask. I said, you know, let's practice. How do you ask, go, go and ask for a promotion, right? How can I ask my manager? I don't know how to ask. It makes, makes me so nervous. I said, no, let's practice, right? So we need to actually help others practice to say it out loud. You say it out loud 10 times and then you go and say it and ask for it. What's the worst that can happen? That they can say no, but at least you asked. And then you say, okay, if it's no this time, what do I do to get there? Yeah. Very, very important next question. I This is I actually, it's my, a note to self that I wrote 10 years ago. I still have a note to self. Very important <laughs> question that I now, you know, I, I talk about it. Uh, and, and it's something to really remember and for all of us to practice. You know, Dipti, I think that is so relevant, especially this week as comp letters are coming out. Some folks may not be super happy with their comp um, and it's settled right at this point in the year. But I think there's an opportunity here to make sure that women and what I'm hearing you say is ask, ask what the path is, right? If you don't understand what the next step in your career is, you've got to be asking the questions of what does it take to move up and get to that next level? And what are the behaviors and skills and things that you're not doing or missing today to get to where you want to be? And then we have a system quarterly check-ins where every quarter at minimum, you should be asking your boss, am I doing the things? What other things should I be doing? What am I missing here? Um, I do in just our last two minutes, I have two final questions. The first one is, I'm going to do a quick round robin and ask each of you, what is your secret superpower? What is that one thing that like people around you see you shine and are unique for? And then the second one to cue that up is, you know, it is Women's History Month. Monday was International Women's Day. And one of the things that's going viral right now is the choose to challenge um, viral experience. And so the final question I'll ask each of you is, when you think about that choose to challenge, what would you choose to challenge yourself, choose to challenge others, or choose to challenge the world for? So I'm gonna go back really quick. I'm gonna start with Jerry. Um, Jerry, what is your secret superpower? And I think you're on mute. Nope, you're not on mute. I lied, it was my fault this time. Secret superpower, Jerry. Uh, just real quick, I want to say uh, about the salary um, real quick. Um, there are salary surveys um, that HR would have, uh, should have information. So you can get those. There's also a government um, here in the U.S., but anybody can and go in. It's called the Dictionary of Occupational Titles, dot.com. You can look on there and it will tell you salaries from anywhere in the country, any job you can ever think of. So I will say that. Um, superpower, I would say, is courage. Um, that, is, that is my superpower. Um, I'm not afraid. Um, I'm not afraid. Um, I, I take risks. Um, you know, they're calculated, but I will risk. So courage, I would say, is my superpower. I'm a good advocate for myself and for others. Um, and as far as the challenge, um, I think for me personally, the challenge is I started a couple of um, doctoral programs and never finished. So I'm going to do that. 
at some point. Um, and, and just to be um, more of service, I think um, I am, what drives me now at, at this point in my career, what drives me is to be of service. And so in any way that I can be- we cut you off, but we have three more and we're one minute over. So I'm gonna keep moving, but thank you, Jerry. Jackie, really quick, secret superpower. Um, my secret superpower is I can figure out what people need. Yes, so sir. I'm taking this exact moment. Uh, I sent a PDF to Anna, who will tell you where it is later on. But here it is. It's called <laughs> Making a Pact with Yourself. This hooks into um, taking care of yourself, even when you have five minutes. Okay, a pact. A P A C A. So you can print this out yourself and just put it somewhere to remind yourself, fold it up and put it in your purse and go, oh, I have 10 minutes to myself. What do I do? So I yeah. can. And I see people dropping off. So I want to be respectful of folks' time because in this crazy COVID world, you're one minute over and people are like, I'm late for the meeting. <laughs> Tip D, what's your secret superpower and what's your Tuesday challenge? Wow. Um, okay. Um, I think uh, my uh, excelling at what I do. And and have and being empathetic with people, right? Those that combination in uh, gets you far in tech. Um, I th I think maybe perhaps. <laughs> and then uh, I choose to challenge myself uh, to a higher bar, to a higher order. And I I also choose to challenge to stand up and say something when I don't think it's fair. And I have started to do that a lot more than I used to. And I would encourage others to do the same. I love that. That is phenomenal. Thank you, Tipti. And finally, Dana, what is your secret superpower? And you are, there you go. No, I'm not. <laughs> so uh, I, I would say I'm a, com I'm a weirdly competitive team player. So I am extremely competitive and I'm also a team player. I want to win as a team. I want to win as an individual and win by an individual by winning as a team. And so it's a weird combination. I've been told that by bosses. Um, You're my, at all, right? What's that? Not competitive at all, right? No, no, <laughs> no, uh, no. Didn't get me to where I am today. And uh, challenge. My, my challenge is going to be up to all the women on this call is to advocate for yourself. Advocate for yourself. Someone else isn't going to do it for you. Advocate for yourself. Don't be afraid to stand up for what you should be and what you deserve to be. So go get it. Be a t competitive team player and get it done. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate your time, your energy, your wisdom. We do have a couple more questions. I'll circle back with each of you, get your answers, post those online. We'll also use them. We're going to post an external blog. So we will use those as well. We're also recording this. So we will share the video um, for those who weren't able to make it today. Really appreciate everybody joining us for the Quantcast Women's Network. Have a great day. Um, to those in Dublin, have a good evening. To those in the U.S., um, have a wonderful start to your day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Anna. Thanks, Quantas. Bye, everyone. It was lovely to meet Bye. you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.